Do you see this great looking game, all shiny? See how it's promising things you've always wanted? Be it the MMO of your dreams, or the zombie survival game of your dreams, or whatever it might be. Well, it's all fake. As evidenced by two very high profile cases. The first being the day before, and the most recent one being the Quinfall. And both of these cases show a very frightening pattern that's developing in video games. And it's something that worries me, and I think it should worry you. Because they take advantage of many of gaming's greatest advances and twist them, using them in the worst way possible, while combining social psychology to manipulate consumers and game the system. I'm not going to do a deep dive on these two cases, because there's plenty of people that have done so already. And, just in case you haven't seen any of them, you have links in the description to those videos. I'm here to talk about the dangers of this new way of scamming, and to explain how exactly it works and what these scams are banking on in order to work. There are massive consequences to this, and I think these cases are the warning signs of a brand new era of games. The age of fake games. And there is a lot to talk about, and a lot that we need to prepare for. So by the way, I'm Mug Thief, and I make videos on things I care about. And this is a really big topic with a lot to cover, but it's very important to everything gaming, so that means I care a lot about it. And there is a precedent for this sort of thing. There's always been a precedent for these things. We've gone through many different ages of people trying to make money off of video games while using as little resources as possible, often crossing into the area of scams. We had bootleg games as far back as the NES, but when digital distribution came into its own, we were inundated with shovelware targeting uninformed users and your average clueless parent. After access to those platforms became easier, we entered the age of the asset flip, selling themselves on either curiosity or for easy trophies or achievement points or baiting with ridiculous sale prices. The Steam Store, still today, suffers from getting so many new games every day that finding the gems among what is now the standard low-quality affairs gets more and more difficult. And because of this system, scammers have now had to reinvent themselves if they want to be successful. You could say NFT games were also a scam, but those really didn't target the same people that this new breed does. And I think these new ones are so much more dangerous. And so I've decided to call this new breed cover games, because that's all they are, just a cover for an empty book. An empty shell trying to convince you to pay up front. And the psychology behind how they work is perverse to the point where it's almost impressive. And the worst part is, it's easier to do than you might think. So let's break it all down. Firstly, we already know that scammers are gonna scam. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. There will always be people looking for ways to make money off of things, be it classic email scammers, AI grifters, or asset flippers. So to track how these games operate and how they come to be, I think the easiest way is to start there and then begin to ask questions. Once stores are absolutely flooded with low quality games looking to make a quick buck, while I'm sure for many the return is still profitable to keep making them, the promise of making any actual money lowers dramatically. So what do they need to do? Well, they need to stand out. They need to become a game worth looking at, worth being interested in, and worth asking questions about. And that sounds like a great idea on paper, but all of those things require a careful effort in each of those areas to actually work. But not so much effort that it won't be worth the return. And this balance between effort and return has to keep paying off. So the things you need to show keep getting grander and grander in scale to really make a dent. And the first part is making a game worth looking at. And this is where the magic happens. The democratization of game development tools has been a boon to the indie game scene and aspiring developers. You can download a multitude of different engines to work with right now, 
from Unity to Godot and of course, the very shiny, very impressive Unreal Engine 5. And you might think, well, but you still need to build a game. Access to an engine doesn't give you a game. And that is partially true. You don't really need much more knowledge than what it takes to make the asset flips we already see. And that's because assets go beyond simple enemies or textures. They can be entire systems, from character movement to combat to having characters shoot, loot, or throw spells. The same can be said for environments, from locations to functioning interactable buildings and weather effects. All you need is the basic knowledge to implement them and the wallet to purchase them. And you might rightly say, that's just an asset flip. So what separates these cover games from asset flips? And the answer is everything else. While asset flips are content with putting together something resembling a game and then putting it up on a store and seeing who bites out of curiosity or because it says it's 90% off or something, these new games are attempting to market themselves to mainstream audiences, to really have a big spotlight on them and to convince people that they are big projects that you should believe in and invest in. And they also avoid a lot of the pitfalls of other alternative game scams like things that you see on Kickstarter because they're not asking you for any money up front. Instead, they're creating a game, convincing you that it's real, convincing you that it's great, and then putting it up for pre-order. So they're avoiding all of the typical warning signs that something might be a scam trying to look as much like a real game, and then taking people's money. And you might think, but there's other ways to spot them, we've already learned, but the day before shows that a lot of people ended up buying it, and this does indeed work. And if it worked for them, people are going to try it at smaller scales in other niche genres, but they'll follow the same game plan. Throwing assets into a blender doesn't make a good game, and as per usual, I have to make it clear. Store-bought assets don't make a game bad. It's not about the assets themselves, it's about how you use them. If they're implemented well to fit into a game or used with some sort of vision, they can be a tool in aiding development. However, buying a ton of assets for almost everything is a very bad sign. And the nail in the coffin is when the actual gameplay systems are also as basic as they come. And yes, I mean literally, as in how they come when you buy them. The first real difference is how these games understand the power of a pretty image. The assets can be bought, and the game itself can be terrible or non-existent. But if you can make those things and make them look all shiny and 4K, understand what your audience will naturally stop to look at, well then you'd be on the right track. Clever use of camera angles, lighting, and other effects can make anything look compelling, especially if you don't need to actually represent a real product. There's plenty of cost-efficient ways to make your trailers, screenshots, and attempts at viral campaigns on social media look professional. From decent voice acting and voiceovers, anything that looks graphically AAA even if it's all canned or baked in, or bought, and even to hiring influencers to react or promote it. Anything necessary to get in front of people's eyes. If enough people see it and have something to say, eventually other influencers will organically react to it and the train just keeps on rolling. Congratulations, you made a household name out of a game that doesn't exist. The extremes of this are games like the day before who had their trailer featured on IGN, and it got a lot of attention. And before you roll your eyes at me talking about IGN, remember that this is one of the biggest mainstream outlets that are in gaming. It's not just about if it makes waves in our tiny corner of the internet. It's the fact that for many average consumers, seeing something on the IGN channel or on their website legitimizes it. It makes it all look very real and very professional. And the reason it got as many views as it did is because it looks really good. But that's not the only thing you need to do. If you're going to have real eyes on your game, you need to sell people that a real game exists. And so far, these people aren't taking lessons in the school of making games. They're taking them in the Killzone 2 school of making bullshot trailers. 
And so the next step is to take lessons in the Peter Molyneux and Todd Howard school of making empty promises. If it worked for them, why wouldn't it work for me, right? So you have to promise, promise and promise. Fabricate a game worth being interested in. Doesn't matter if it's real or not. Just like I'm promising you right now that if you hit the like button on this video, you'll have good luck for the next five years. Now, that isn't true at all, but you will help the video reach more people and you'll have my thanks for it. But as for examples, well, the day before, a survival open world zombie MMO. The best parts of The Division, The Last of Us, and Rust combined with a true AAA open world in a huge MMO. Who wouldn't want that? It's a great idea, and if you told me that on paper, I'd be excited. And if you then showed me the trailer and the artwork, all of which shamelessly rips off and evokes all of those great games with a budget that seems unreal, I'd be excited. And if I saw the trailer and then heard about the game, I'd still be excited. And this is where it gets insidious. Because the worst you can say about the game is that it sounds too good to be true. If a game looks bad, we forget about it. But if a game looks too good to be true, well now we're talking. People start to wishlist it, bookmark it, talk about it, speculate, say if it's real or not. And finally, they'll start to investigate. But you're paying attention. You give it word of mouth. Because the worst that can happen is that it's not that good. The internet keeps turning and turning and now we're talking about SEO and Google results. And meanwhile, they're taking advantage of it to keep getting the product in front of more and more people. You keep thinking that the worst that can happen is that it's not good. Maybe it's not as great as it sounded, but still a good game. Maybe at least it's interesting or there's a good fun story around it. But you wouldn't just dismiss it and throw it out. And that's precisely why it works. A lot of people, some even desperately, want the project to be real. And so it grows. It feeds on people's hope, whether it's their wait and see approaches or the wars between naysayers and believers. But in the end, it grows. Or what about the Quinfall? It's the largest MMO world ever. That's the bold claim off the start that accompanies their trailers already deconstructed to show how pretty much everything in them are store-bought assets. And even some recent news mentioning that some of the assets used were delisted in 2015, conflicting with their alleged initial development start of 2021. And other elements seem stolen since they're assets that aren't for sale, but are present in other games like the case of its UI and Black Desert Online. But if you didn't know any better, the game looks fine, promising even. It has bold claims, it has building and housing, it has raids and dungeons and towns. And of course, we all know that MMO players are starved for games, including myself, so we gotta hold on to what we can, right? So you think that it's all there. You listen to the promises and they have your interest. And that's when they execute the final step. If the audience has questions, they have answers. Who are the developers? Where is the money coming from? What is their previous experience? But the real issue is that once we reach this stage, the scammers have already won. They have answers with complex structures for companies and fake addresses. They'll talk about remote work and satellite offices. The developers behind Quinfall have real experience in making a much smaller scale MMO in record time. But to find that out, you would have to go digging. And what you find are answers that, for as much as they can be suspicious, also serve to give people hope. And the final result is that the game is available for money. Fake games for real money. Pre-order now, get early access and exclusive skins. They perfectly imitate everything else the market does. All the other games are offering you early access and exclusive skins, so this must be a real game, right? Hurry up and get that early access so you can be the first to find out if it's real or not. And enough people will bite that it's all worth it for them. And that's why it's truly a new scam for a new era. The era of rampant algorithms and misinformation where people believe what they want to as long as you show them what they want to see. The era of React content and viral clips. And I don't think those things are inherently bad. That would be very hypocritical of me considering that I comment on a lot of stuff. 
Quite the contrary, actually. Being completely honest, the majority of content covering the day before and covering the Quinfall now are people very directly warning others in titles, thumbnails, and beginnings of videos that these games look like scams, that you should be cautious. But at the same time, when you consider that the day before got to be the most wishlisted game on Steam, how much it sold on release, what we see is that it doesn't matter because that exposure is still beneficial to them in the end. It's not quite the Streisand effect, but somewhere around there. And they benefit from it in the end. And while the day before resulted in the historical first time ever that Steam has refunded everybody who purchased the game, as these tactics evolve, as they keep worming their way into the system and taking advantage of it, other projects won't have that happen to them. And that situation with the day before can even be seen as a double-edged blade. It also makes people feel safer in wanting to try out any other game that might be similar. We think, well, I can still get a refund, or they'll refund everyone if it's fake. But the truth is that the tactic works, so scammers just have to tweak the execution a bit. They can hide those initial two hours for the refund window behind tutorials, or a garbage pacing at the start, or server queues that can very well be fake. Even if people do refund it, as long as the game isn't such a mess that Valve has to step in, these people know for sure that enough consumers will simply never refund it for it all to be worth it. And anything else that may happen, they'll keep adapting to stick close to that line of effort in exchange for return on their elaborate scams. And the worst part about all of it is that I still can't in good conscience tell you outright the Quinfall is a scam or it's a fake game because maybe it comes out and it's simply very basic or bad, but not an outright scam. But they got all the free press in the world for a game that we can list out the entire budget through the assets that it's using. And because it's working, more and more people are going to try their hand at it. It's not like the playbook is completely new. Mobile games have been doing this style of marketing for years. We're just expanding it to a grander scale and selling it to a different audience. And there are possible complications, there are difficulties, but they'll work around them and find ways to not make it matter. Things like how these games have been announced a year or two in advance to their releases. Well, they'll find some excuse or fabricate evidence to make things look more legitimate, and they'll keep going on their merry way. So what is the end result of all of this? What are we left with? And how do we fight it? Well, for starters, established developers and publishers matter more today than ever. This is very unfortunate for indie devs who already have it hard with the amount of games and getting discovered. But the truth is that if a reputable publisher is backing a game, you can at least believe what the game is claiming, at least for now. The second is that you shouldn't believe anything you see. This has always been the case, but now more than ever, if something looks too good to be true, it's okay to hope that it's real, but never ever believe it. And if you value your money, don't pre-order, don't wishlist, don't do anything, because you're going to feed them attention. If the game is real, trust me, you'll find out when it releases, because people wouldn't shut up about it. But don't waste time and energy beyond morbid curiosity on projects that look too good to be true. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's probably a fake game, and you can care when they prove the opposite. When people you trust actually play it, or a reputable publisher picks it up, then we can start with the wishlisting train. But Things like wishlists are very valuable. The conversation on content and if it should be made or not is debatable. I think that warning consumers is good, but it does lead to more press. And since we can't stop it, at least stopping pre-orders and wishlists is important. These things legitimize these games, especially into people who aren't aware of them or don't spend time on YouTube or X or anywhere else. And they might see a game as one of the top wishlisted games and say, oh, this looks great, I can't wait to play it and plop down for the pre-order. And the third one is to follow trustworthy sources. 
Whether that's a website or a publication you trust, an influencer or a streamer you trust, whatever it may be. For as much as in my circle most of what I saw were people talking about how the day before was a scam, I've also seen plenty of channels with 500, 600,000 subscribers reposting trailers. IGN and GameSpot had big bold claims of official exclusive gameplay from the day before. Don't get fooled. So let's face the truth for a second here. Even if this style of scam keeps growing and gets popular, it's easy to imagine that the damage will be minimal. Sure, we'll be inundated with fake games and fake trailers and it might even be fun. And you might think nobody is going to fall for this, especially if you're someone that's in the hobby and in the culture. But the truth is that what these games are looking for is to reach a broader audience, a less informed and more gullible and hopeful audience. These scams aren't an impulse purchase for a dollar on an online store. They're targeting the widest possible audience in their respective genres. And when they get the attention they're looking for, and the modern algorithmic media machine gets a hold of it, not only will there be victims, not only will the scammers make a profit, but it makes all of games look bad. It scares people away from the medium, or can lead to mainstream media coverage misrepresenting gaming. Not to mention how they promote this horrible culture we're already seeing where we have to be skeptical of everything all of the time. There's enough terrible practices coming from huge corporations today that I don't want to worry about our stores being flooded with scammers and our feeds being filled with fake trailers. And my hope is that we're all here because we love games and we love our hobby and we want the best for it. It doesn't matter if you think that the damage these games cause is not significant or if you just find them funny. The truth is that we don't know how out of control this thing can get and these guys are realizing very quickly how to utilize the system to their advantage. So call this stuff out, because we can very well be witnessing the start of a whole new racket. And if this video made you think about the situation in a different way, or you consider what I have to say valuable, please hit the like button so that it reaches more people. Share it with someone if you think they should be aware of what's going on. And of course, I'll always appreciate it if you consider subscribing. Like I said, I make videos on things I care about. Sometimes that's news and reviews. Often it's big in-depth essays or retrospectives. And sometimes it's stuff like this. And I'd love to have you along for the ride. I've been Mug Thief. Thank you so much for watching. Don't get scammed. And I'll see you very soon.